Yo, what's up guys, back again with another video in the Java series. This episode, I'm going to show you how to work with the generic functional interfaces. Okay guys, so now we know how to make, you know, lambdas and functional interfaces with, you know, uh, single line expressions and block expressions basically but this episode we can learn how to actually use generic functional interfaces in which we can use you know uh, type parameters right so if you don't know anything about generics then go ahead and watch go ahead and watch uh, the last few episodes about generics and uh, make sure you get caught up on that but it's pretty simple so basically um, you know before we worked with um, you know returning a certain data type whenever we make our our interface right but let's make an interface in which we can uh, define the data type that we want to return whenever we make the lambda expression, okay? So basically this means that we can make a interface and its method that doesn't have a specific data type, but we can specify that data type whenever we provide the implementation. So that means we can provide multiple implementations of different data types just to one interface. We don't have to make a different interface for each uh, um, data type that we want to make a expression for, a lambda expression for, okay? So anyway, it's better to demonstrate this, of course. So let me go ahead and show you. So let's just go. Let's just go ahead and make an interface here. We'll call it thing, because why not? And then let's um, specify a type parameter, okay? And we're just going to call it a, just to keep it simple, okay? And then we can actually make our abstract method, of course, because that's what you do whenever you're working with uh, functional interfaces. Before we could do something like this. We could return a string and then have a method called like thing method. And then we, it could take a parameter of string A, and then that's it, right? But this time, let's make it so that you can return any data type, basically, okay? So we can specify the A right here, right? So just put A in there. And also, we, we could just leave it like this, so they can provide a string in their implementation, and then it'll output, you know, a uh, whatever this data type is as the return type. But let's make it so the parameter is also a type parameter, okay? So you don't actually have to do that like I just said. But uh, in this case, we're going to just show you how to do both a uh, generic parameter and a generic data type, return type, okay? So that's pretty cool. So we can actually, you know, from this point, actually provide the implementation for that, right? So now that we have our functional interface, so let's actually implement it. So the first thing we're going to do is make a uh, object reference, of course. So thing, and then we're going to call it reverse. Okay, so we're going to make another thing that just reverses a string. I believe we did that last episode or something like that. But the problem is, we actually need to specify what the data type we're going to be working with is because, of course, we have a generic uh, type parameter right here. So right here, we would put the data type that we want to use. Okay, so string, and then we could do equals, and then we could do uh, the actual lambda expression. Okay, so for our parameter, well, let's just go ahead and use a string also. So we could use string, string, or string, yeah, that's fine. And then arrow sign, arrow operator, and then... Well, let's use a block expression here and instead of that block expression let's actually have some uh, variable that can hold our reverse string when we're going to output it so basically we'll do um, string reversed reversed string okay hopefully I spelled that right I don't think I did there we go reverse string and let's just leave it empty sorry if I sound really weird I mean I probably always sound weird but this time my nose is really stuffed up so I'm struggling Okay, so for, um, and then we'll say int i is equal to string, which is going to be our parameter. So let's name it something else because that's a little confusing. So we'll do s instead. So we'll do s dot length. So we'll find the length of the string. And then minus 1 because we want to cycle through the index, not the actual length of it. And then basically we're going to go backwards like we did last episode, I believe. So then we'll do i minus minus so we can do that. And then inside of here, we'll do reverse string is equal to reverse string plus string, or s, I mean, um, and then character. So whatever character is at that thing that we're currently cycled through. And then finally, we want to return the reverse string, okay? And this fulfills our uh, return type here because um, basically, if you think about it, we're making a object here. Um, which is going to be an object of this interface basically, okay? But also we're specifying the return type here because we're saying we're telling the type parameter what, you know, type we're using. So it's going to go here, right? But also A refers to the type parameter here. So this would also mean string 2, okay? 
So basically, a return type is going to be string. So that's what we're doing here. So there we go. And then we have an error here because we don't have a semicolon. So now we're done. And there we go. So this is all very simple. Hopefully, you understand that. Um, or what's going you understand what's going on. Okay, so let's actually test out this thing just to make sure it works. So we'll do um, reverse dot thing method and then we're going to provide a string as the parameter of course because we told it to do that. So we're going to call it um, let's call it um, pickle because I like pickles. I just ate a pickle today because I'm cool and you're not. So let's actually start this, run this program and it should print out pickle backwards and it does. Awesome. So that works perfectly fine. So let's actually put a let's put a number in here see what happens. So we put one in there and we get an error because um, thing cannot be applied to integer but it's supposed to be applied to string because the string is supposed to be in here and uh, yeah so anyway yeah we can't use that so anyway um, let's actually fix this here we'll use booty um, so anyway um, let's actually you know do something else with this functional interface so like I said we can use multiple data types now because we're actually not specifying a specific data type for our generic um, functional interface basically okay so we can use any data type because it's, it's a type parameter and all that fun stuff. So let's make a whole new implementation for this. So we'll do thing, and then this time we'll use integer, so we can work with the numbers basically. And we could do find factorial, okay, equals, and then we're gonna make a basically implementation that is able to find the factorial of a number that is provided. And if you don't know what a factorial is, is basically just the um, a number basically times the numbers below it. So basically, if we want to find the factorial of the number six that would be 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 1 okay that's the factorial of 6 so like this I believe so 6 is equal to that okay so that's the factorial okay so we're gonna make a little implementation that is able to do that operation so we'll just throw in a number here so we can actually just specify a, um, a parameter name and not a data type because the data type is already gonna be inferred from the uh, what's it called the abstract method here but as you can see there is no data type for the abstract method so that will also be inferred from the actual um, parameter type that we provide here okay so it all connects basically so let's provide an arrow, arrow operator here and then we'll do a block here so we'll do int result is equal to one and then we're gonna make a for loop here int i is equal to one uh, i is less than or equal to number number is gonna be the one they provide of course and i plus plus Okay, we're basically just cycling through every number under the number that we provide. So then we could do result is equal to i times the number that we provide. Or times the result. There we go. So then we're going to return that result here. And there we go. So, and then let's actually have a semicolon here. And that should work. As you can see, there's no errors. So let's actually test it out. So we'll do find factorial thing method and we're going to give it a number of 145 or we'll keep it simple so we can make sure it works we'll do three let's run that see what happens so we get six so that should uh, be right so if we do three times two times one that actually equals six so that's correct and uh, yeah so that's how we do that that's basically how we work with the generic fact um, functional interfaces you know we just specify the parameter type up here and then we can use it wherever we want to like a return type parameters and stuff like that so we don't actually need to set the, t the uh, return type to equal our you know our type parameter we can actually still have it as a string if we want it to be okay so anyway um, if you have any questions about this you know don't be afraid to ask questions I would love to help you out if you need anything um, also we have a discord that's in the description you can join it uh, hang out with us whatever you want to do and also most importantly we have a link to all the code from today's episode so make sure you check it out bookmark it for future reference whatever you want to do and uh, yeah so Yep, if you liked the video, leave a like if you want to see more, subscribe, and peace.